Welcome to another episode of Big Talk. My name is Samir Uchi, and today we're here with Mr. Prashant Kumar, who everybody knows as PK. Now, PK is a tech entrepreneur, among many, many other things. And the reason he's with us today is because of the app that he built, which is called Dalil App. So without further ado, PK, how are you? Thanks, Samir. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing good, actually. I'm very happy for you to be here with us. Uh, I've been following your company for a while. Um, I've actually attended a couple of the startup events where you won. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, every time I mention Delil to some of my friends, they actually name you by name. They're like, oh, PK, PK and the team. Because you're a t- how many people is in uh, Delil? We are a very lean team. So we are just nine people. Uh, but in the region, obviously, this is my second venture. So I'm being very blessed with the ecosystem being very supportive here. So, yeah, uh, that's how a lot of people know me because... I moved in here to start my previous venture, which was uh, completely disruptive again, which is the largest open banking platform in uh, the MENA region called Tarabut. Okay. So, you know, that's how I built my initial network and a lot of people know about me. And then I ventured into the deal with my, uh, some of the other uh, colleagues from Tarabut. And, you know, because we saw this as a big opportunity. So w- tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you're originally from, where, where are you from? I'm from India, actually. So you started in India, that's where you grew up. You went to school in India? Yes, I started my schooling in India. My dad was a government servant. So, you know, obviously when people ask me which part of India you are from, as you know, India is huge. Uh, you know, because of my dad's transferable job, I was born in Agra, which is north of India, and then traveled along with him wherever he got posted. But I spent a lot of my time in what we call the Silicon Valley of India, which is Bangalore. So that's where my professional journey started and that's where, you know, I, I grew in the financial sector. This is, Dalil was not your first uh, venture. Um, we want to know the journey. We want to know what happened. We want to know the good things. We want to know the bad things. We want to learn from everything that you have to learn. And then we want you to tell us a little bit more about Dalil and how it plays a role in, in pretty much uh, every person who lives in the Middle East. So um, you were born in India, you went to school in India, you went to college in India? Yes. Okay. And at what point did you decide, you know what, I want to leave India, go somewhere else? Yeah, so that happened uh, seven years back, basically. So uh, this is, as I was saying, Dalil is my fourth venture and second in the region. So, you know, my previous venture, I was having customers in Middle East and in Africa and Europe. And I was looking at, you know, uh, Middle East to be hopped so that I can reach those customers easily. We can build a team here. And I was looking for investment to set up in Dubai. And that's where I met uh, the Tarabut founder and CEO, Abdullah Almiad, in Dubai. And he was coming back from UK to, you know, start his own firm uh, after his investment banking stint. And he met me there and he said, PK, why don't you come to Bahrain and let's do something together. So he's, sorry, he's from Dubai or he's from UAE or from Bahrain? He's from Bahrain. Abdullah he's from Bahrain. Is, yeah. But you met him in, in Dubai. The- so be- before you met Abdullah, you were in India? Yes. And you were working where? Uh, so I had my own startup. Uh, what was it called? It was called Nurture and before that, uh, Vision IT. So these were the two other startups which I what had. What were they doing? So this was mainly working with the banking and financial sectors. Okay. Uh, you know, so uh, basically either the product or the services to these banks in their digitalization journey. In India? Uh, no. So it was so we're saying not only Indian customer, but African customer, Middle Eastern customer okay. and Europe customer. Wow. Okay. And that's where I was looking to establish a base in uh, Middle East, uh, potentially in Dubai so that, you know, I can grow the company from there. And this is something you started on your own? Yes. How did that? How did that start? I mean, how did it? What were you doing before you started that? Okay, so let me take two steps back. There we go. Right. So you know, when I moved to Bangalore, uh, you know, to start my first journey, it was I joined Infosys. Infosys is a tech giant, but when I joined them in mid nineties, uh, you know, I was not in their services sector. Uh, I was working for you know a startup within the company, which was uh, the brainchild of one of the co-founders, Mr. Nandan Nilakni. So he wanted to build a financial product out of India. So he recruited a small team. I was part of that. And so it was a startup environment within that. And since it was a startup environment, working closely for the eight, nine years within the banking sector and people like him, uh, grew very fast, got a stock options, uh, you know, apart from growing fast in terms of the salaries and all. But more importantly, entrepreneurial work caught me there. And I realized that, and I was 30 at that time, 29, 30, and I realized I can do much more impact by doing something on my own and still driving the financial sector agenda. 
So I decided uh, to leave Infosys and start my first startup. So this was so you already had a job. Yes, you were secured. Yes. Um, now you're one of how many siblings? Uh, four. You're four siblings. Yes. Are any of your siblings entrepreneurs? No, none. And not only in my siblings, in my entire family, both on maternal and paternal side, you know, we were brought up to, you know, educate and become professionals and mostly take secure job, uh, you know, which pays well, which is, brings in a stability. So I'm the first one uh, in the family to do something like this. How, uh, what do you think, why do you think that happened? I think that happened, as I was telling you offline, you know, like uh, maybe as a child when I was growing in, I was the youngest in the family. So when you're youngest, you get pampered a lot. You're allowed to do a lot of things which your elders are not allowed to do. So, you know, I still remember when my my parents would give us the change money, the coins, the small coins. My siblings will collect it to buy something, whereas I will collect them in a safe box. And my mom will ask, why are you not spending this money? And I was like, no, no, you don't understand. You know, the 20 year, 30 year down the line, these coins will be worth millions. So I will sell them at that time. So I guess I had that mindset from the childhood, uh, you know, that how to work is smart and maybe, you know, create more opportunity and generate more wealth. That is actually very, very interesting. You actually had, no, nobody was motivating you. To, in fact, everybody was motivating you to the opposite. Secure, comfortable. So I'm sure nobody was happy when you when you were uh, trying to venture into the entrepreneurship and leaving us a very good job that you had, uh, I'm not sure if you had a lot of support in doing so. Okay, so here we'll, I, I would put it. You're absolutely right. Everyone, including my, you know, the company itself, Infosys, they were like, you know, they were all themselves entrepreneurs. But they were like, PK, I think you should spend a couple of more years. We'll give you more responsibility, manage million dollar, you know, the thing and all that. And I realized that that's a corporate trap. If I do it for two more years, maybe this hunger will go away. I don't know what will I think when I, I'm getting much more money, much more stock. Maybe I'll become too lazy to say that, okay, this is the life I want to enjoy. But when I decided to leave, I think they were quite supportive. Uh, you know, they were my first customers. Uh, even with the family, the same thing happened. My parents actually realized that the entrepreneurship would mean that I'm putting much more effort than I was doing in a job. It will involve much more travel. So in fact, they moved from their location to stay with me in Bangalore so they can support my, you know, uh, you know, my journey and, you know, uh, be there as a, you know, a backbone uh, for our family. That is actually a, a, a very nice because, um, I mean, th that's fantastic. Your, your parents saw, they saw the potential. They didn't try to change your mind. Maybe initially they did, but then they realized that you were adamant. Yes. And then they were like, you know what? I'm going to change their minds. So <laughs> they changed their minds. Yes, and they absolutely. started supporting you. Yes. So then from there, you decided to, you were already involved in some kind of a financial, your, your eyes was open and your mind was already open and you were already working in the financial field. Correct. The technological part of the financial field. Correct. And um, how long were you doing that for, you said? So I was doing that for almost eight, nine years. So that was the time. And now that I have revealed my age, you know, when, when ATMs were not a thing, they were just coming in. Right. Uh, the centralized banking where you can bank from any time, anywhere kind of thing, these were coming. And these were the technologies which we were building and coordinating and integrating at Infosys. So, you know, when, when a new thing comes, like right now, the AI, so the guys who have built the AIs, obviously they are far, far ahead than the companies which are consuming it as a thing, right? So that is what happened with me in my journey because we were the ones who were building these kind of technologies and platform. There was a lot of learning. There was success. There was failures from what you were learning from that. And you had a lot of banks with whom you were working to rolling this out. And that is what gave me the confidence and understanding of the financial sector world, uh, the ecosystem, how banks think, how they work, what are the transformation which we can bring in. So <clears throat> did you see... So at that time, you didn't start anything yet at that time. You when I the, left Infosys, I started. Uh, in India? Yes, in okay. India. You, yeah. So you had your own setup, your own, yes. uh, you were your own boss already, Correct. an entrepreneur, yes. struggling yes. entrepreneur. And uh, sure the first... No, I think any every entrepreneur goes through that cycle. You you know, you whether you call it a struggling, you really have to do it hard. And then you see success, you smile. And then the market will pull you down because some events will happen which are not in your control. Right. And then you go up. So it's a journey, you know, I think. Uh, I relate with it as, as, as you know, the roller coaster ride. The ones who ride on it willingly, enjoy it. The one who get forced to it, like screams or don't keep their eyes open. They want that ride to get over. I'm the one who sit on that front row of the roller coaster and enjoy it. Uh, uh, yeah. That's good. 
I, I usually sit all the way in the back because I want to. I want to see. I want to see everybody screaming before me, so I can see. This is my favorite seat in the back seat. Yeah, and I prefer. Poster. And I prefer opposite. I prefer the first one because, especially even in those rides where you take the you on the top and then drop. drop. I want to be the first one to see what is there. Basically, you know, I, I want to have that sense. Yeah, that, that actually makes makes a lot of sense. So you were doing your own business for. 14 years. 14 years you did your own business. I did a couple of them uh, in those 14 years. So there was another one in Singapore where, you know, there was an opportunity where the Deutsche Bank was starting their journey with the APIs. And, you know, I had a lot of connections, you know, again, working through Infosys with Accenture team. And they wanted to fast forward the mission of Deutsche Bank. So I assembled a team quickly uh, in Singapore, delivered something for them. And that's exactly what I did when I repeated it here in, in the region. You know, got a small team with me. Uh, to start what we did with the uh, you know tarabat basically yeah. so how different is dalil from tarabat from uh, what 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 makes dalil different and also why did you choose to do it here in bahrain yeah i think those are two uh, slightly different question but let me connect uh, both right so in terms of tarabat when i came in here i saw a huge opportunity meeting all the banks and the regulator that the experience uh, and the infrastructure was quite backward so to say right but what I saw that the regulator was quite open, quite nimble, the ecosystem was quite supportive. And with Tarabut, we tried to create an infrastructure, an infrastructure where the data sharing can take place, which is what was the open banking regulation, which was there in the UK and the US and the other part of the world, but it was not there in the Middle East and we got it here. So, you know, uh, on, you know so we worked together and we created that platform, we got the regulation in, right? Now, the idea was once we get the regulation working, we create the infrastructure, people will use those infrastructure to, you know, come out with more value propositions. So it's like you create highways so that beautiful cars like Ferrari and Lamborghinis and others can drive, or you can democratize and say that anyone who has a car can drive and have the same access to the place where they want to reach. But that was not happening. Who was not getting on board? Uh... Yeah. So the banks were coming on board to the extent of the regulator wants to, you know, make you uh, do the open banking to open up the data. So they were forced to do that, so to say. Uh, the fintechs were doing some value proposition, but the actual value proposition which solves the problem, and I will narrate the problem, what the Lille is trying to solve on both sides, that was not happening, right? Either people were thinking it's too hard or too complex, or you know, like, okay, you know, they were not understanding technology enough to do the thing, right? So if I have to define in one line what we are doing with Dalil is we are creating Amazon for financial product. So today, if you want to shop, whether you're shopping for a book or a MacBook, you go to Amazon, you look for that category, and then you can do a comparison and you can just one check out and you can get that product, right? So if for you as a user, it's so super easy. You're seeing what other users are talking about it. What are the best product? And you're able to do that. On the other side, for supplier, it brings unit economics because the Amazon has given access to a whole set of new market. And so the suppliers are able to make use of that. And they are also getting insights. What I need to do to be the number one in this category and so on and so forth, right? Now, cut two to financial world. If you look at in the region, A, the literacy is very low. I'm not talking about educational literacy. People are here are very educated. They are very tech savvy. But financial literacy is just 21-22%, right, in the region. Whereas the Western world has 65%, right? And I realized that and the team realized that this is A, because of the cultural nuances. And second is the information which banks put out or the financial institution put out. So what we are trying to do with the lead is A, consolidating all the information. So if you're looking for a card, you're looking for a deposit, you're looking for a loan, you come to the platform and you can see your options. You can literally like Amazon, compare them side by side. You look and look at the user ratings and the reviews and you can confidently make the decision of what you want to buy. On the bank side, what we have done, if you really look at in the financial sector, there is no personalization. You watch Netflix, you know that Netflix recommends, you know, these are the series you would want to watch. You go to Amazon, Amazon recommends you this is what you want to do. Now, finance is the most important part of our life. Why are the banks sending you and me and these young guys who are recording us the same credit card or same deposit offers, whereas our lifestyles are completely different. Our life stages are completely different. Our financial means are completely different. Do banks not know that? They know it, right? Because they have all the data. When Samir bought his first car, 
to when Samir, you know, got his first salary to how you grew. But banks do nothing about that data. And that's what open banking make it easier to you to dissect and say that, you know, what can be done with that data, right? So on Dalil, what we did is we are giving tools to the bank to come out with more personalized product, more personalized offers and say, hey, here is the set of customers to whom you should target these deposit product and you can curate a completely new one. So we are helping them in a way to get customers at a very lower cost and give them more personalized product offering. How did you even come to know of Abdullah? Abdullah actually came to meet for the investment in the company and uh, basically we, we had a very good conversation and he had in his mind he wanted to start something in Bahrain and that is where he invited me. Why don't you come down to Bahrain and let's do something together. And my geography is very poor, Samir. I may be good at a lot of things. I had no idea a country like Bahrain exists and you know people should not kill me for saying that. So I went back home. The first thing I do is I had a globe to look at where is Bahrain and I saw that Oh, it's a beautiful tiny island and I said let me come down and see you know what the opportunity like is and again don't kill me for saying this I came first time here in 2017 right and it was you know the during the national day time uh, I have I have traveled a lot of countries you know in my previous entrepreneurial journey or emphasis and I have I'm a little weird person that when I land at the airport and I drive out I either form a connection with a place or I don't. Like, you know, when I say I don't form a connection, my mind says I'm here for a business trip or I'm here for a touristy thing and I'm going back. But in Bahrain, when I landed midnight, you know, I think it was post two o'clock, the breeze, the environment. And as I said, it was national day time. So all the buildings were having those red and, uh, you know, the white, white lights. And in my head, stupidly, uh, a thought went, but oh, they're celebrating Christmas here. Yes. Uh, because I haven't seen the Bahrain's flag, Because right? it's uh, December 16th. Yeah, December is our 16th. Day. So I'm thinking that oh, they are having an early celebration for Christmas. So that's one thing. But, you know, I was I was feeling the air. I was feeling connected to the country. And then I had, over the period of next two, three days, Abdullah had set up meeting with all the banks, CEOs and the board. And the more I met, I realized here is an opportunity to disrupt at a national level. Basically, you know, if we, if we do it right, we can disrupt. And, you know, I moved in. I decided in a thing, you know, he was like, are you in? Shall we do it? And I moved in in the January and we started working on, you know, working with the regulator, assembled a small team uh, of tech guys uh, to build a value proposition, went to the regulator with Abdullah. You know, we got a uh, nod of sandbox, you know, CB Central Bank had a sandbox environment where you have to build and showcase them. And we did that. We went through that journey of the initial six to nine months. What year was this? So this was in 2018. 2018. Yeah, so 2018, we applied for the sandbox. Um, we actually worked with the banks, persuaded them to do some kind of integration to showcase this back to the regulator. End of 2018, we got, uh, you know, the what you called as graduation from the sandbox. And uh, then on back of it, we got the license. We were the first AISP. And that's how the journey started. That's, uh, I mean, it's. It, I have to tell you, it's not easy, and, and the financial sector is not an easy sector. Uh, it's not, not anybody can just think of a, an app or a website or a business and say, you know what, this is for the finance. There's so many regulations, and it depends on the country's regulations, and then they have to deal with the banks and their own banking regulations. So you really picked something that is uh, not easy to do. Um, but given the fact that you had your prior background, no, was it? When you joined Infosys back in India, uh, which was dealing with financial matters in the first place, did you have any prior knowledge of finance before? Was this something you loved? Was it finance something you like? I mean, we all love money, but was it was, was there any interest in finance itself? Uh, not at all. So in fact, when I was picked up for this, I was actually wondering when the interview was going on that I don't even understand. So, you know, some of the guys, when they were talking about clearing and deposit and all have absolutely zero idea. I'm techie. Right. And I joined the tech team there. And so obviously in a product, you know, Infosys, when they were building the product, there were people from the banking sector who would define the product and all. But very quickly in the first year, I realized that if I need to learn and I want to enjoy this, I need to interact more outwardly. And that's where I picked up my ABC of the banking, understanding the balance sheet, understanding the product, and then apply my technical mind to see certain things which others can't see right so you need to understand the domain but I was I was blessed with having a lot of bankers working within the organization but more importantly 
actually interacting with the banks when we were building something new, right? So when you create something new, the more you speak to the users, the more you speak to different kind of people, you can learn a lot. And that's how my learning of banking happened. So that eight years was, I think, was really a super fast forward learning on the administration, on management and the domain itself, you know, all these three or four different things. Because that's not what you graduated from. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm engineering. So my graduation is electronics and telecommunication. My dad wanted me to join a telecom company, uh, which is, uh, you know, the government owned. And uh, I really had to persuade him, no, I'm not cut out for that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're happy now. Yeah. So, uh, will it be safe to say that, because um, we want people to, to learn also and tap into their potential. Uh, maybe not everybody's potential is in the finance as yours. Yours was not in the yeah. finance. It yeah. just happened to be there. You happened to be uh, utilizing what was around you, understanding what was going on and thinking, you know what? I need to invest my time and my knowledge more into this because I, something bigger can come out of it. Now, so is it safe to say to, to, to anybody that's listening to this who's thinking of becoming an entrepreneur that they need to be... They, do they have to know what they're doing? Like as in your case, you weren't you're not a finance person and, and you've created one of the best apps that I've ever seen in terms of financial marketplaces in the Middle East. I've never honestly I haven't seen something this good. Thank I, you. I gotta tell you. And in the US, I've seen things like this, but they're more dedicated to their own banks. They're not it's not like a one one kind of thing. Their their regulation I think is a little bit different. So um it, it's good. I've 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 appreciate that. Yeah. Um but what I'm trying to, to get the people to understand like if I'm young and I have a, an, a, an idea of an, uh, to do a business does it have to be something that I'm familiar with does it have to be something that I was raised in or studied or graduated from or or sometimes you need to see where you are what you're involved in even if it's something that's not really your background how, how does the aha uh-huh idea come into place great so I, I I think I want to say two or three things with respect to this right Uh, Do I need to know everything before I start? Not at all. Nobody knows, you know. A lot of time, this is my fourth venture. Have I figured it all? No. You learn every time, you know. You learn from your colleagues. They must be much younger to you, but when they ask a question. So, you know, that appetite to learn is very, very important, right? Uh, That are you curious? You know, do you really want to do that? So that's important. You don't have to have figured out everything or have the knowledge. If you have the passion, you will learn that, right? Like sports, right? Uh, so that's one thing. The second is, uh, if you have an idea, should you want to pursue it? I think definitely people should pursue it uh, because, uh, you know, there is nothing better than solving a problem, which, uh, you know, which not only helps you, but it's solving the, helping the society also, right? So they should do, they should figure out and tap onto the resources which are available to them, right? A lot of people, time, people are a little shy in asking questions, Right, whether I will get this response, somebody will help me out or not. Though net has a lot of things, you know, talking to fellow people or other people kind of thing. I think that's important. And the thirdly, I would say that, you know, I think like I, I always have Steve Jobs as, you know, a, my favorite figure. Okay. So he had this line of you cannot connect dots looking forward. You can only connect it looking backward, right? So if I look at my journey, today it is easy for me to say that oh, it was good for me to join Infosys but not join on their services side, uh, but rather focus on where they were building the product because my trajectory is now I'm building product, right? But when I was taking that decision that I want to go to Infosys and I want to go in this area, I was not aware where life would take me, right? So, you know, it's it's like, you know, you should be fluid, uh, you know, where life takes you. Don't plan, you know, like, oh, 10 years, 20 years, this is what would happen. Have some kind of a blueprint or roadmap, but enjoy the process. Uh, you know, whether you, I, I, I say that there are no failures, there are either success or there are learnings, basically. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, actually, um, very much. This is, <laughs> I understand the way you think. Now, you, you brushed on on Steve Jobs, which leads me to one of the questions that I, that I have for you. Have you had anybody, any inspirational, influential or um, people that you thought since you were young, um, this is who I want to be. I want to be like that person. Uh, I want to understand. Was there anybody like that? Be it family or none. You know, you mentioned Steve Jobs. That's why I'm... Yeah. So I think I want to say a couple of things there. One is in terms of, you know, when you say when you want to grow and what are your reference points, I think I treat it on the personal side and the professional side. 
personal side, I think my dad was my hero, basically, in terms of the value, right? So though we came from a middle class family, how he treated people, uh, you know, in different hierarchies, how he treated the family in different situations, good, bad, ugly kind of thing. I think that had a huge impact on me, like as a person. And that was very clear to me that when I grow in, I'm not letting go of these values. I will learn a lot of things, but this is my benchmark for a person to be seen and respected and doing things for others, basically. So that's my reference point. On the professional side, I think once I joined Infosys, I remember in the initial days, people will call me Gates. I was always inspired by, and, and that was not because I was trying to do what Bill Gates was doing, but because my first ever presentation in Infosys was on, uh, you know, uh, these Gates uh, kind of a thing. And people started calling me that. But, you know, I think in the technology world, my reference point always have been Steve Jobs. I've been a big fan of him. Uh, because of his way of thinking, because of his way of building companies. You know, he has always looked at the consumer first. He has always looked at the design as first thing to do. And more importantly, he has always thought, talked about hiring the smart people and let them do their things kind of thing. And I'm a firm believer in that. I, as I was mentioning, I have no ans not answers to everything. Just because I've done more times than my colleagues or my co-founders, mean that I know it better, right? So, you know, uh, that that's where he's my reference point because for me, he's a reference for A, the excellence in terms of what you deliver and B, in terms of how you scale and build an organization. How many members is in the Delhi right now? How many staff? Just are? nine people. Uh, so, you know, we are three co-founders and then... Uh, Who are the co-founders? So, my co-founder is, one is Radha Shah. So, she is based in UK. Um, and uh, another one is Tanya, Tanya al uh, She's based in uh, UAE. I've heard of Tanya al yeah. She's based in UAE? Yeah, she's based currently in UAE. And, uh, you know, she moved in there after her marriage. And then we have another colleague from our previous venture called Salva Imtiaj. She's leading our uh, product and design. So she's a design, lead product designer. And then we have uh, Muntaha, which we call MEMS. She's in the marketing team. We have another woman, uh, you know, who is a techie. Uh, she's based in uh, Dubai. Uh, and so as you look at it, you know, in the nine people, uh, we are like 60, more than 65 uh, percent is the women uh, right. representation. It, it's, it's, it's they keep you grounded. It, it, it's, uh, well, it, it, I mean, I believe it's important that you have qualified people working with you. And if those qualified people happen to be the women, then albeit, let them be 90% or 99%. Absolutely. I want the best people in my team to make Absolutely. my company succeed. Absolutely. And I think you have found uh, that and, uh, and well done. Thank uh, you. Well done. When we are hiring people, we look at where are we getting the best talent. And best talent, I just want to qualify, is not about the people on their CV with showing, you know, they have worked in a bigger company or something. The best people are who are the best learners who understand and who's, who believe in the mission and uh, vision of the company and obviously who have understanding of the region kind of a thing. So wherever we find, whether it is in Pakistan, whether it is in Eastern Europe, whether it is in Dubai, you know, we hire people based on that. Where is actually your office here in Bahrain? Where is it located? We operate out of Bahrain Fintech Bay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 Fintech Bay. I know that. Who were the initial investors in your company? Oh, okay. So from the investment perspective, bootstrap the company. So, right. you know, obviously, and that has been my... Best thing. Yeah, absolutely right. You don't want to give away... Every one of my yes. companies that bootstrap. Yes, Every one of absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. You know, you don't want to give away the equity too early. The second is, you know, as you rightly said, this is a complex area. A lot of time investors do not understand right. what you're trying to do. You know, it seems like you're trying to do something crazy. But you, if you believe in this crazy idea, obviously you should show it by investing in that, right? right? So that is what we did. Uh, we also was supported in terms of, as you know, in Bahrain, Thumkeen, you know, right. there is a support from that. Right. We took uh, that. We won certain competition, like a standard chartered women in tech we won. So it got some money in. Uh, we won Visa Everywhere Initiative in Saudi. So that got some money in. So that is what gave us the bandwidth for the initial one and a half, two years. Basically, you know, the own money plus the prize money in Tamkeen. And then we started raising, uh, you know, um, the smaller amount. And uh, Hambro Perk, uh, through their venture studio here in Berlin, uh, they invested in us. What's it called? Hambro Perks. Uh, it's a UK venture. Uh, so they signed a safe note and they invested through uh, a Spring Alvaha Fund of Fund in Berlin, basically. So they were our first investor. Uh, we got investment from Flat Six Labs in Abu Dhabi. And then, obviously, 
we got couple of angel investors including uh, Shekhar Anya uh, Al Khifa uh, she is the recent uh, angel investor in our uh, journey so far how many more investors do you need okay it's sort of about how many so you know my philosophy of raising money is two uh one is you need to raise only as much as you need because a lot of time i've seen in previous experiences also a lot of money either distract you or you burn it on unnecessary things right correct so we we are raising a very small sum of 600000 us dollar currently right so that's what we need now in terms of the investors we look from two kind of investor one is the strategic investors like who can give us the connections open the door believe in our mission and bring in some strategic value and right either from the ecosystem perspective or from the new geography or new perspective and these are you know like what we consider as our angel investors and we are happy to receive 25000 50000 ticket from them right uh, in the 600 pool and the other is obviously the institutional investors like of ambro perks like of flat sex who are required because you would need a follow on investment as you scale because our vision is to go to the mina pakistan region now you know these kind of fintech businesses require more money uh, for you to scale faster so the second is you know looking at those kind of institutional investors so dalil is currently in bahrain or it's based in bahrain yes and uh, the current banks that are signed up are, are all from bahrain yes how correct. many banks do you have so we have signed 12 financial partnerships and is, can you can we name them national would... bank of bahrain uh, bisb uh, we signed even with fintechs like binance and uh, rain uh, who are our partners so we serve both financial institution bfc pay uh, you know where uh, one of the largest financing company so you know we have automated the complete acquisition journey through our platform so today if you're looking for a travel card you can do a seamless journey from dalil so these are some of the relationships and the contracts which we have signed in uh, bahrain and as we speak we are actively setting up in uae so inshallah we plan to go live by end of this quarter in uh, uae and start signing up with uae banks So it's um you, you mentioned Amazon um whereas um which I fully understand what you're trying what, what you're referring to um but in terms of Dalil the Dalil app that I have in Bahrain will be different than the Dalil app I'll have in Dubai or in UAE because in UAE it will be showing me the UAE financial marketplace correct whereas in Bahrain it will show me the Bahrain financial marketplace there is no crossover uh there are banks which have uh, both UAE and Bahrain uh entity but obviously if I am a UAE customer I'm interested in knowing uh, what the UAE products are so you're right the app would remain same the way we have created the platform we don't have to recreate a new app for UAE right right it's all api driven microservices enabled platform all we need to do is sign up those partnerships and then you know uh the platform will start showing if you as a user select uae you see the uae banks and uh, product now you just need a username and password or do you have to have a, like a cpr i mean how, how what are the process of of signing up uh, op- opening an account yeah that's a great question so you know i think uh, we were very clear when we were building it up uh, that uh, we will handle the data on need to know basis so if you want to access the app you can simply download and you can even sign in with your apple id or google id as simple as that you don't even have to share your email id with us and then get bombarded with these unsolicited mails uh kind of thing and you know the idea is people to come on the platform and make decisions right so for that part you don't require anything however as you move forward in the journey and say for example you decided you want to have uh you know to apply for the travel card or a credit card through the lead at that time we would collect the information which is required from you so if it is cpr or you know your mobile number uh kind of thing is what will go through the platform so based on the services which you want to use on the platform you may have to share more information and this is being shared with dalil or do i for example let me give you an example so i'm i want a car loan and i use your app to find out what are the interest rates that different banks are offering um and they will be telling me senate charter is this city bank is this i mean i know i'm naming names but you know mbb is this bisb is this um if they signed up if they're part of your p- p- portfolio and they were telling me that uh this is the uh, interest rate that they'll be taking uh would they be telling me what requirements they have because i mean there's so many things like salaries and how much you're making and what is your um um like in the us like benefit here yeah, there's a credit report, report. you have a yeah, yeah, credit report yeah, yeah. so they might say you know we're going to give you 5% and then when they find out it's me like oh wait we're going to give you 6% cuz you're high risk or you know what you have very good credit history we're going to give you 4% 
how does that work? How does the customization part work? Yeah, great. Uh, again, a great question. So what we have done is to make a easier from the user perspective, let's break it down into two parts. So first part is you're looking for a car loan and you don't know what is best. What we have done is we have done a 100% market coverage. Doesn't matter bank has signed with us or not. You come on the platform, you can compare everything and you can decide, okay, this is the bank I want to go with, right? Now, say for example, you are going with a bank which does not uh, is not supporting the straight through processing, what we call in a technical term, uh, you will have the information what this bank needs for this. In fact, we redirect you to the website of that particular bank, that page. E- even if they're not signed yeah, with you? Yeah, even if they're not signed, you can do the process with them. But, you know, the idea was that people have put their effort, they were looking for it. This, this bank is still not our customer, but we value your time. So we want to guide you that this is the process, right? Dalil means guide, right? That's actually very, very clever. Yeah. So that's the first thing, right? And because for us, how it will work is then we can, you know, when we have sufficient people doing that, then we can go to this bank and say that, hey, you know, why don't you sign and make it easier for you, right? So that's the first part. The second part I want to, you know, where you said that, you know, they ask for documentation. Obviously, different product require different documentation. And that's what we are trying to make it easy for the customers on that part. So say, for example, first time you came to the lead on your car loan, let's take your example, right? And we asked you, hey, give your salary certificate. Hey, give your, you know, like a bank statement uh, for the last six months. We have taken that and you have applied for the car loan and the CPR, right? Now, tomorrow, for whatever reason, you wanted to have a deposit account. Now, for deposit account, you don't need the bank statement. You just need your CPR, right? So what we do, we securely save your information. So when you select the deposit product, we actually show you, this is the information we have, right? This is the CPR and this is thing. Do you want to change it? No. You know, your one stop, you can directly go and acquire that product. You don't have to again upload a document, again scan yourself kind of thing. That's where we are going with uh, our product. So you're you're not just easing the choices for me and filtering and telling me what's available. You're also making it much easier for me to go instead of physically going to MBB and then trying to apply and getting approved or not getting approved and then coming out and then going to BBK and then giving exact same paperwork right. and then coming out and then going and going to BISB. You're telling me, you know, stop doing all this. Just come to us. Yes, cut it. See what you like. We already have your information and then you can just plug it and see it and get the response. And if there's any further details needed, then the bank itself will contact Call you, you and, yes, and you deal directly with, with that. Uh, Absolutely right. How do you guys make money? Yeah, so making money is with the banks and financial institutions or the fintech partners. So there are three ways in which we make money. One is, you know, if you really look at it, when I was talking about the struggle of the banks, bank, so first let me give you the straight answer of how we make money. So the first one is we charge them an annual subscription fee, uh, which we give them an access to our web application. So like you have seen the mobile app, which you have been liking it, we have created an app for the banks, which is a web application which gives them ability to launch the product, launch the offer. As I was driving down, you will see the banks put holdings, billboards saying that, hey, invest here, do this yes. kind of thing, right? This this, this web application gives them the facility to actually promote their products and offers within the lead because that is where people are searching for product. They're, they're marketing, so they use it as a marketing, marketing well, tool. Not just use a... that as also as a tool to acquire the customers. We give them insights because today they don't know, I put this holding, but how many people actually engaged with, uh, you know, that hoarding? They don't know because I was driving. Uh, whether I went back and looked at this bank product, they don't know. But on the lead, they're able to get all that information, the rating reviews. So we charge them annual subscription fee for this dashboard access. Then we charge them a lead or a success commission fee. So based on, you know, you came on our platform, you said, I like this bank product and you go, that's a lead. So they pay us the lead fee. Or if you acquired that product, they pay us the commission fee. I don't, how do you know? I mean, does, it, does the product need to be acquired via the app or can, they acquire, can, can I see the app interested and then I go to walk into BBK and say, I saw something uh, on your billboard. No, it was on the app. Yes, it was on the app and so on. So how, then how do you guys? Okay, on that particular such cases, you know, so obviously we have a mechanism where any lead which is coming through our platform, we actually integrate with the bank. So banks have the detail of what was the name, what was the, you know, the CPR or the mobile number. Obviously, some of this in the early stage is a matter of trust, uh, you know, and, and their comprehensive system uh, to say that, yes, this lead indeed came from the lead. So we have a specific code and things like that which sits in their CRM. 
uh, obviously a user who completes the journey on Dalil, there are no debate about it because you know you came on the platform, you initiated with us. We go to the bank with that list and say that hey, you need to pay us for these. But in the other case where you did this, but you went and did the process manually, it's more of a matter of uh, operational processes and the trust uh, which gives us the money. Now I'll use the Talabat example. Yeah. Now uh, Talabat, uh, I remember when it first came to Bahrain and and, and the journey and, and where it is today. My point being is that today Talabat has become uh, what started as an ordering service, which still is an ordering service, but it's really a marketing platform. Yes, uh, I have a lot of my friends that have restaurants and they have to pay quite a bit of money to be listed in the top 10 or the top 5 or to be listed as a referral or to be... If you want to have a discount or a promotion, they're going to charge you because you're going to have a discount. What does Dalil do in that area? Okay, so we are... In marketing and... Yeah, so we are in a little early stage, right? Uh, you're right. In any proposition like this, you know, Talawat is nothing but a, a food marketplace, right? Uh, we are a financial marketplace. So I think, as you rightly said, we are in those early days of Talawat uh, to compare from our side. But what we have done is we have provided the promotional uh, step uh, to the bank. So if you go to the app, you will find a couple of financial institutions actually promoting and we do charge them for that promotional space, right? Kind of thing. But one of the philosophy with which we live by, in food, you can compromise on that or even in the autos and things like that. Uh, we want the decision making to be unbiased, not because somebody is paying us more money. We list them on the top of our searches. I think that would be counterproductive to what we want to do. We want to make finance easy and accessible here. So I don't think we will ever go down to a path where we'll say that, hey, if you pay us X dinar or, you know, thousands of this, I will always show you on the top of the list. I think that would not be doing, that would be a disservice to the people kind of thing. But making more money because, you know, there are more users and, you know, more promotional part, that obviously is something which we are testing out even in the current phase. Now, I, I personally, I wouldn't mind if I had a one app such as yours. I mind it when I have, you know, if I have six, seven bank accounts and each one of those bank accounts, I have to have their apps and I have to have their notifications because I want to know when the money is coming in or going out. So I'm being notified constantly. But uh, I wouldn't mind knowing uh, from an app such as Dalil, what's the latest interest rate that's being given or what's the latest or even, for example, I, I buy, I, I use Rain. Yeah, I like Rain. I use Rain. And they're always telling me what's up, what's down, what's up. What's... I actually make my decisions based on those notifications that they send me. So when it comes to finance, because finance is a, it's like, oh, the interest rate is down. Oh, the interest, you know what? Next month I will do this. No, no, this is this is now because tomorrow could change. Yes. So getting that information to me really early and telling me that a bank that I've never thought of. So there are a lot of banks right now I don't bank with. Not because I don't want them. I just don't know them and I don't know what they have. And I'm not going to go walk into there and be bombarded with their whatever it is that they want to, you know. But I would not mind knowing what they have because then I will know how good my bank is in comparison to that. So right now I'm in my bank. I'm very happy with my bank. But to be honest, I have not shopped around for the services that I'm getting. But if I have this app and this app is shooting me some kind of notificational, let's just say market, marketing notifications, let's yeah, just say yeah. that Ela Bank is now issuing this or BBK is now doing this or, you know, if you, it, it does play a role in my decision making in terms of uh, shifting my money, uh, applying my money. I'll give you a, an example. Um, I wanted to open, uh, I, I just opened up one of the, another company. And uh, I wanted to open a bank account. You need a bank account when you open a company just to make it legitimate, right? So I go to MBB. MBB is the bank that I've been using all my life. Uh, I like MBB. MBB is good. It's a Bahraini bank. I like it. The problem is it's too big. Okay. Um, I used to go open a bank account within a week. My bank account is there. And I've opened so many businesses in the past 30 years and doing it all with MBB. Last month, I went to MBB. I said, I want to apply for a, for a, a, a open a bank account. They said, oh, okay, fill this form. Form number one, form number two, form number three, form number four. It was just a small company yep. with a very minimal, um, uh, over, um, not overhead, uh, capital. And uh, I had all the paperwork uh, necessary. And then he said, okay, we'll let you know in three months. We'll let you know in three months if we were going to open the bank account. And I sat back and I'm like, first of all, Forget the fact that I've been banking in this and even my personal money is there. Forget that. Yeah. Okay. 
Forget that I've been banking in this for so for X amount of years. If I'm just coming here and I've put in all this application and you tell me, we will let you know, not like come back in three months and your account will be, we will let you know if we're going to open the bank account, if it's something that we're interested in. Or yeah. Yeah. If, we're, if we want your money or not, if if your business is going to be good or not, and it's going to waste our time. That's basically what they... What yeah, they, absolutely. Yeah. And at that time, for the first time, I'm like thinking this is ridiculous. First of all, why would I wait three months? Yeah, absolutely. But apparently they're bombarded with applications or they don't have enough staff or they've changed their policies or they don't care about small businesses anymore. I don't know. But it made me leave that place. And then this is when this is when you came into the picture and this is when I went to that. And I started looking at these things and I thought, you know what? This is actually their rejection. I wasn't rejected. Yeah. But their delay and yes. their way of, of dealing with a small business made me think of alternative uh, options and alternative things. Now, I found one. I found one within 24 hours. They open up the account with, uh, you know, a welcome and a, and a whole solution. And I thought, how can this be different? How can you have one bank doing things so differently than another bank? I wonder what other banks are out there that are even better, that are even giving you support or giving you... A th How do I find this out? I'm not going to go and waste my time in six, seven different bank accounts just to open... Six banks just to open a bank account for my business. Um, I would like the banks to come to me yeah. and tell me, like, you're a visible business? Well, this is what we have for you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, in fact, you know, a very good points you touched upon. And obviously, that's what we're trying to do with Dalil. And the next step which we're going to do is... So, if you... Think of yourself as a retail uh, example when you were saying, you know, where you are getting better interest rate or where you're getting the deposit. So when we integrate the open banking and that's where, you know, we will be using the open banking for. So with your consent, uh, you know, and you connect your bank account data and let me talk about a couple of use cases. So say, for example, you're owning a credit card of XYZ Bank. Let's not name names. Uh, and we see Let's let's see on that transaction history. We find that you're an avid traveler. You know, you know, you uh, do a lot of trips, yeah. and there is, you know, on our platform since we covered all the banks, right? And whether they are our partner or not, we will actually tell. And we have information about their offers. We will say, you know what? Instead of this bank, I think you should go to, uh, you know, another bank. I was about to say ABC. Uh, which is not a retail bank, so I can still name it. Uh, you know, this bank would offer you a better credit card, right? So that alert comes to you. Now, it's completely your decision. So it's recommendations also. Yeah, it's recommendation. That is the next phase which we are going to do. This is Delia's recommendation, unbiased recommendation. It's unbiased recommendation. Not we, promotional we, recommendation. Yeah, not promotional. So this we are calling it, we don't even call it recommendation. We call it actionable insights, right? You as a customer, you decided and you trusted the lead to, you know, give access to your bank account with open banking. It is still not live. This would be our next phase. So we will be able to tell you, you know what, Samir, you're an avid traveler. Instead of this card, you should use that. Choice is still yours. Whether you want to go there or not, we are prompting you. Or looking at your transactional data, we find that, that you know, over, you know, open banking gives us access to 12-month data. With that data, we look at, okay, this much amount you don't need for the next 12 months, you know, based on your spending pattern. We would suggest to you the investment product where you can get more return on this money. And how we would we recommend is one is from the product which are there on the platform. On the second side, we are able to go back to the banks and tell them that, you know what, there are 10,000 people in Bahrain who don't need this 5,000 dinner for the next 12 months. Can you guys do something? Can you run... When you come out with a new promotion and you put the hoarding or wherever you promote, can you actually talk about, you know, if you're putting 5,000 in for 12 months, this is the rate because you would be able to acquire these customers. So banks are able to personalize and then we are able to nudge the users and say you can do that. And these are not promotion direct, right? It's an insight and it's your decision that what you want to do. And that's where we will go with uh, in the next now, with Dalil, if I open up a bank account with Dalil, would I be able to access that bank account via Dalil? You are, so with open banking, you will be able to access your, you know, 360 degrees. So if you have, say, a credit card with A bank, a savings account with B bank, car loan with C bank, you can give the consent for all these three banks part and you can look at, at a single place. Stop. All the You're telling me that my MBB app, my BBK app, my AUB app, my Santa Charter app, my HSBC app can all be in one app. Okay, so the banks will kill me, uh, you know, when I go live with that. So I, I will not say that you can have uh, dish away all those apps. 
but what i will how i will put it is with your aub your nbb your you know whichever bank's name you took all their information in terms of you know what is your savings what is your deposit what is your transaction history everything will be there on the same app now if you want to do the transactions you will probably go to those banks right we will not be you know because the your user id your passwords your otps are all connected to that bank but having a view of all your product and making financial decision with ease without the biases of the banks that you will be able to do all on day you said otp which brings me back to the security aspect how how do you ensure your security and how do you ensure your data is protected right so uh, two uh, frameworks first and foremost is any data which you know i said in the beginning we collect is collect on need to know basis and required basis right uh, completely compl- complying with the pdpl uh, here in bahrain whole data is completely secure whether you know uh, in transit so transit means when you're on the app and you're trying to send information or in rest when it is stored with us so it's completely encrypted when we will get into this open banking phase where you can have all your bank account uh, you know linked on the leel and so you can see everything on the leel you know how much you spend on coffee how much you spend on thing where you can get better interest rate and things like that uh, central bank has actually outlined a security framework so we'll be complying with that framework uh, in addition to what we already have is there an app in bahrain that's similar to this uh, as of now no is there an app in the gcc that's similar to this uh in gcc uh yeah in 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 uh, similar to us no but giving information about all your bank accounts there are a couple of apps which have tried it you know i think where the struggle come for them is if you have an app where you can see how much you spent on coffee or how much money you have and thing it's good to know once in a while but if it does not give you actionable insight right because they are not a marketplace uh the usability goes down significantly and this is what i learned during my tarawood days because we have hired people from like when you were quoting us we had people from mend we had people from yardley you know who have come in which has built those kind of apps where people could you know what we call as an aggregate all accounts but sooner or later you know people disappear from there because there is no much value you know uh, beyond the vanity value after a time it is challenging because not only you have to come up with this app and you have to make sure that the app is good and useful but you have to do make sure that the app is useful every single year yes from there on correct and every single year from there on is different than this year absolutely right so and if you don't somebody else is doing it somebody else is just right behind you there correct writing ready ready to capitalize on what you're not capitalizing on correct and that's fair you know when you build especially in a marketplace it's important that you're delivering value to both side it's not that you know samir felt very happy that hey i can you know get away with all the apps yeah that's great but imagine if the banks don't see value in what we are doing then they will stop giving us the information right and that's the reason it was important for us to connect these world of saying that hey bank here is the value for you we are bringing customer to you as a lower cost we are bringing you inside so that you can come out with new product and you know so on and so forth now how about i'm in bahrain i'm bahrain i'm in bahrain i'm banking in bahrain and uh you know what i'm thinking of uh setting up shop or going to america to do something in america would dalil be able to guide me what's available for me in the us or in a different market is what i'm trying to say or is it just going to tell me you know you're in bahrain stick to what we have in bahrain we're not going to tell you what's available outside that's a great question sameer so where our vision is uh, we are actually looking at in the beginning the mina pakistan region right so to that extent if you're our user at least the countries where we go in so like i said we started with bahrain getting into uae next and then to saudi you will be able to see those countries product information but if it's a completely different geography like europe and us where we are not there uh in the beginning yeah you won't have such information May- maybe us was a bad example dubai the uh, yeah you dubai would be is much more realistic yes. a lot of people want to go or saudi yes. you know we want to we just open up a branch we're going to move into there we're thinking of going there we want to know what's available and we don't want to and we, and you know if dalil is helping bahraini people in bahrain choose what kind of banking system there is dalil can definitely help a bahraini going to bahrain to saudi because he has zero knowledge of saudi Absolutely. so the only thing that he has to rely on is this app that he uses in his own country to tell him by the way in this country for you as a bahraini with your cpr these are the banks that were willing to work with you and willing so this is something that's available will be available it would be available so this is what when we are expanding to different countries like say uae when we go live by end of this quarter sitting in bahrain you can look at a 
I'm Berini. What are the bank account and what are the information of the UAE banks that would be available in that? Or similarly, if you are in UAE and you moved there, you know, and you want to open something, what would be? And same, you know, when we go to KSA later this year. So yes, this information, what you're wishing for is coming on. Uh, I, I think that. that's really important and really useful because we're, there's a lot of crossover in this part of the world and your businesses, you're always aiming to expand your business. And when you expand your business, you want to know how the only fear of expansion is what's that country as that, that's really it. Who built the app? Who designed it? Who, who created it? Okay. So in terms of when you say uh, who built it, it's basically, you know, obviously you'd come up with the business idea. You want to say what you do. So last year when we had gone live, it was an MVP. So we did, you know, we did not focus much on the design and things like that. We wanted to put out a minimum viable product to see, you know, how people will respond, whether people will click on apply now, people will go to cryptos, people will look for credit cards. So not much thought has gone into the design. But earlier this year when we relaunched Dalil 2.0, so we did uh, that internally. So like uh, when I mentioned one of my colleagues, Alva, she leads the product and design. Uh, so she was given this task to look at overall designing, redesigning of the product. And obviously we as team contribute to it, what kind of business use cases which should be coming in. We do had some external help available uh, to drive this overall uh, redesigning the uh, product. But it was driven internally uh, with obviously some resource augmentation from outside companies. We are the lead. We are not just any fintech. We are rocking the scene in the MENA region. Want to know how we got here? Simple. We found a problem and we solved it. Finding financial products in MENA was like searching for a needle in the haystack. So what did we do about it? We built a platform that helps individuals find the best financial products and helps banks and financial institutions leverage insights and personalize their offerings. But don't just take our word for it. Ask Hussein. Yep, they are great. But we felt like we can totally up our game, so our awesome team have been working tirelessly to help you reimagine your financial journey. And guess what? We are excited to unveil what we call Dalil 2.0. For individuals, we're offering you a new way to search, compare, and find your ideal financial match. Whether it's hunting down the perfect credit card, snagging a car loan, or diving into the world of crypto. Don't worry, we've got you covered. And for our trusted banks, Wait until you see what we built for you. Picture this, a revamped dashboard that not only allows you to roll out new products and offers in a snap, but also serves up insights to help you stay ahead of the game. You're welcome. See, we're not playing around when it comes to reimagining your financial journey. Join us on this adventure to make finance easy and accessible for everyone. The reason I'm asking you is because, you know, apps is the, the, the new business things. Everything today, um, app-related, are actually angel investors, venture capitalists are more interested in app developments Correct. than they are in brick-and-mortar kind of things uh, currently. I don't know what will change in the future, but this is what it is today. Um, so anybody that's out there is thinking, you know what, uh, I can make an app about picture frames with different pictures and different, you know, whatever app you can think of. How do they go upon making that idea into reality? What 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 did you do, and how would, would you advise somebody who yeah. has an idea? Yeah, and uh, you know, every like any idea, like any entrepreneur, they don't have money because every entrepreneur starts with no money. Absolutely right. Very basic, basic you know finances. But can you can you shed some light and give us some ideas of how somebody like that can start? Right. So there are a lot of tools available. Uh, you know, I think the process is important, right? So when you have an idea, so my two cent would be when you have an idea don't even build it first, right? You feel that this is an idea, start talking to the people. Like, you know, when you have an idea, you think that XYZ is my target segment, right? Go out, don't even tell what you're planning to build, how you're planning to build, how it will look, how it would feel. Just tell them, like, to just to take an example, uh, if you said that, let, let's go to the restaurant part, right? Suppose you decided that, you know, you want to put a food truck of, you know, Indian street charts, in, in universities and that's the business you want to go to. Don't buy a food truck, don't put the recipes, don't buy the material. First go to the university where you want to sell, right? Speak to the people there that, hey, you know, what do you guys eat, you know, and uh, don't lead them to your solution, but collect that information to validate what you're thinking would work is really required or not. Once you have done that, 
then do some rough sketching, which can be done on a piece of paper, piece of page, that this is how the user experience would look like, right? And then again, bring in some filtered set of people, not necessarily your close friends, because friends will not give you critical feedback, a mix of people, run through that thing and try and understand from that, that that flow makes sense for them, right? Because you're not building app for yourself, you're doing. Again, so far you have not invested any money, right? You've just done research to understand some framework, you've done the sketch. Once you have done that and you want to build it, there are various ways and means. The technology has moved so fast now. You don't have to be a techie to start a company, right? There are platforms available where you can just put, you know, the prompts and AI and things like that. And it would create the first version of the app for you. So just make use of that, basically. Obviously, if you want to build a scalable platform, then you need to, you know, forget about what you're seeing as an app in which you are admiring that this app looks good. I think what was the most critical part for us for Dalil is to create an infrastructure or technology design which makes our app scalable in different countries so that each time when we are going to UAE, we are not again doing the whole effort what we did for Bahrain, right? So like in Bahrain, we spent say 12 to 15 months. When we talk about Dubai, we say two months we are going there. Uh, you know, when we go to Saudi, maybe additional two months. Forget about the administrative hassles. I'm talking from the technical perspective, right? So when you're building a scalable, before the design, the technical architecture will come into place. And then obviously, uh, the design, the better you want to make it, you need to have, at some point in time, good designers in your team. So like for us, we hired after a year of our journey, uh, not before that. But in the beginning, you have a lot of these things which you can do to validate. So you can uh, use off-the-shelf kind of things that are available which are pretty amazing today Correct. in comparison to what they were just three, four years ago absolutely um and and easy not only that uh, how about security is it secure so uh, yes so the security again is you know you need to worry about security if you are start collecting the customer data right because there's a trust issue i mean because you're talking banks it doesn't yeah. get more sensitive yeah. Than, yeah i think the most sensitive thing is the banking no, no, absolutely asset. right and that's where i said the architecture part from the technical perspective right but when you're testing your hypothesis of the idea right so you cannot build a product saying that i have built it and i have integrated with the banks also right because first of all banks will not allow you to integrate they would want to see the value in your product yes right? so at that particular point in time the security is more in your control because it's more of an information which you're collecting and you know and how you are dealing with it so it's easier to do because you have to go through the phases of first an idea which we call as an ideation then a sketching and then you know the user journey flow then putting out a minimum viable product which probably is working on a standalone like uber story if you would have heard uber when it started as a first app uh it had you know the payment method mentioned there as credit card but none of the time your payment would work because they have not coded for it they wanted to see whether the customers are willing to enter the credit card detail in this interface now the moment you have to build a credit card interface you have to comply with 3d secure the mastercard visa which is a costly affair correct right imagine you investing your money and energy in getting that thing in place and there is no user adoption or there are no drivers coming in right so that's the reason any business which is today big have gone through the similar journey you don't have to spend a lot of money in the beginning to test and validate the ideas you don't have to put the thousand percent things around it to make it secure mere thing but obviously don't create things which will be a security loopholes give use a hack saying that okay the payments would fail because i'm not taking taking this payment back so i'm not storing this customer information right but i'm checking if customers are willing to enter that right that's the phase you are in you should know which phase you are in and build your security around that now delil uh, i mean i have your website over here it's open over here can I use the Delil website in the same way I use the app or it's just use the app? The, the website is just simply uh, who we are, what we do and, and the information. Or can I go on the app and there's a sign in app and I sign into the, sorry, go into the website, sign into the website and then the website opens up and it's exactly my app is there. How does, how does okay. So the short answer is no, you can't do a lot what you can do, uh, means any of what you can do on the app on the website. Uh, just a heads up, we are actually in a phase where we would be redesigning our website also, uh, you know, because this is from our early days. Uh, however, what we want to do is we want to remain a mobile centric. So on the website, we might give certain features where, you know, you can explore that a uh, little more than what you can do currently. But, you know, the journey, the overall thing would always be mobile centric. It will not be on the website. 
So my my area of expertise is is media. I've been doing media for a long time, and and every aspects of media you can imagine, I've been doing it. Whether it's publication, online, digital, TV, websites, whatever it is, that's my 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 area of expertise, uh, among other things. But uh, you boast of the fact that you, without media, without promotion, without advertising, you have reached so 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 many times. Tell us how that happened. Okay, no, that's. Uh, I wouldn't say that we boasted. We just stated the fact. It's hey, it's good, and if it works, I will learn and I will apply that to my to my to my to the clients that I have. So yeah. I'm not uh, against it. I'm just saying share. Sure. So I think the operative word there, you know, because uh, you know, with due respect to your background part, and that's important to know. We said the zero is spent. It means it doesn't mean that we were not covered by the media. I think a lot of people in the media world has been very kind to us, like you. Right. Right. So we are not paying for this, right? No, you're not. So, so similarly to that, you know, a lot of time, a lot of uh, collaborators have actually, you know, the media house has covered us in different aspect, whether it is local BH uh, or, you know, uh, the other uh, press uh, people who did it uh, because they saw us, we are doing something good. Where we call ourselves a zero marketing spend is most of the time when people build companies, they go after, you know, spending a lot on the digital media to acquire customers. It's more... More than the brand building to acquire customers, you spend a lot of money, you're getting investors' money, let's burn it on uh, social media, right? It's easy. My view is, uh, it's good, you should do that, but I think there is a time for that, and there is a small budget which you should allocate for digital media, because more often than not, when you actually, there are two aspects, right? When you're building the product, your product is not perfect from the day one, right? Like today, when we are talking about in our next phase, Samir, you will be able to connect all your bank account. That's coming later, right? Maybe you as a user, this app would become much better at that stage in time. Imagine me bombarding you with our ads on Instagram story and you download the app because you felt this is there. You come to our app. It's not there. Chances are you will delete. You will never look back at the deal, right? So you don't want to acquire customers too soon for the value which they perceive you are bringing in, right? The second part is in the initial phase, it's important to bring customers organically because, you know, you don't need to uh, live in fantasy that my app is working. There are a lot of people who have spent a lot of money in the digital media. You have upright, you have millions of customers, and then over a period of time, you have a decline because it's easy to get, you know, there are times when you give people free coffee. They'll come for that, you know, free coffee. Coffee the moment you stop, yeah. The moment you stop it, they will find the other shop to do it, right? So I'm a firm believer that users should come because of the value you're bringing to the table, right? And that's where we kept our marketing spend zero. So there were two reasons. One is we are still building the product, let it uh, take its natural course. And second is you should always target users when there is more, more value you are uh, bringing into that. The second part was, you know, the building the community. As I said in the beginning, Finance is a very taboo subject here. We realized that we will put out this app, but it will not solve the core problem. Like people here think that they need to own the house they live in. Or, you know, the credit cards are bad because they are not, you know, uh, they are against the principle of Islam. Whereas, no, it is not. There are Sharia compliant banks. There are credit cards. As long as you are paying them a bill on a monthly basis, you have stuck to the Sharia principle of not taking a necessary loan. But you have probably got the cash back, you have got some rewards and all that. So it is good for you. So what we did, we invested a lot of time and energy in doing community building. So we go to the universities, we go to the telcos, we go to the banks and do these workshops. How, how do you do that? What do, what do you do? Do you just call the telco or, the, or a university and say we're coming over and, and they say come? How, how does that work? Yeah, so it works with, you know, our marketing team uh, work in, you know, curating these partnerships. We actually go to them and say, hey, you know what, uh, we are doing this. This is our purpose. We have seen that people do not have enough financial literacy and we want to help. And these are free workshops. You know, we were very fortunate in one of the competition met His Excellency Ministry of Industry and Commerce. And when we had the interaction and we said that we want to do these workshops and we would want to do, we do, he said, how oh, is it chargeable? He said, no, we do it free of course. And he said, okay, fine. I'll put my team and do it. We did for Ministry of Information and Commerce, right? This workshop. So, you know, when you reach out to the people with a cause that why you are doing it and uh, what is your motive behind it? Uh, I think they are more receptive. And we have been very fortunate. We would have, you know, touched more than 20,000 lives in that process, uh, you know, of going out and talking. We titled them, uh, you know, our initial workshops have 
your relationship with money right and then we make it very engaging because some workshops we actually bring in the expert we bring in the financial psychologist we bring in the financial planner uh we bring in a bank to talk about you know uh the things we have bought in regulator uh in in doing these you know the uh workshops around you know how to improve the financial habits so you had the regulator you had the bank you had a crypto provider and we you know doing this uh conversation where you have 50 60 people who have registered for that because it's free of course and people learn in the process and in that process then obviously they understand there is an app there they download it they use it and we acquire the user that's how we have built our brand our user base and you know uh, the community that's very smart whose idea was that i think it was our idea collectively as a team you know when you uh, i will tell you something when you don't have the money you get a lot of ideas <laughs> When you have the money, then you choose the easy way out, right? So yeah, you're absolutely right, PK. In, in fact, I, in, in, it, money ruins your creativity, correct? Uh, and uh, yeah, it really does. And uh, it, and you're absolutely right. When you don't have it, your mind starts thinking of different ways of getting what you want without having to correct. And and in in our Samir, in our fundraising process or our getting money process, also we behave like that. So even when we raise. we do not because i've seen this in my previous uh, uh, experiences a lot of time you get distracted oh i have money you know let's do it you stop thinking but we were very clear when we started this venture that we will still be very frugal in our approach right we have the money but that's for building more features that's for giving us the longevity and not in spending hey let's you know throw this event and you know let's have a lavish buffet you know where people are coming when we do our customer workshops where we collect information uh we don't even provide coffee you know the water is there uh which is important but we don't have a coffee or a thing because we believe users should come because they also see a value and how we build this trust is a lot of time you know the comparison feature was not there right in the beginning people came in and said that if i could you know see the comparison side by side in a single screen it will be better for me Somebody came and said that can you give us you know like sort by the interest rate it will make my life easy that whole new page of filter and sorting and things came from the users uh, yep, feedback, feedback in workshop so when you do things differently you uh, obviously get benefited in more than one ways than you can think of Delil is still up for uh, investment opportunities right um and you are interested in having uh, uh institutes and uh individuals and uh, institutions as well uh, to invest uh, into your uh, dream into your app um why right so you know obviously uh, building and bringing in this kind of disruption is not uh, easy in terms of you require resources you need to accelerate uh, growth so what we are looking at is a building on our team as i said in the beginning we are just nine people including the co-founders and we have a dream to you know become uh, very soon expand into mina p so we are already getting into uae we are getting into ksa so for those expansions so that's one part uh, you know for expanding uh, we require the second is we are building the team that's the second part the third is to activate some more revenue streams right so the moment you are in multiple country there are more costs associated with it and that's the reason we are raising more money uh, you know in terms of uh, helping us go to that next phase but why would an investor do it to investors are more than happy to do a uh, kind of thing what uh, is it in for the investor is what i'm trying to get you to what what are you promising the investor be part of our family so that we can or you can all right what's the you can message right so the you can message is you know is from two side one is in terms of we are trying to you know if you want you if you associate with the mission which we are on to make finance easy and accessible for all and you believe in it that's your you know why you should come in right because it's an important part and nobody else is doing in the region uh the literacy is also an issue and and such an app does not exist so one is that the second part is purely from the money perspective for the early stage investors who are coming in our journey right now i think we are offering equity at a very very attractive uh valuation so uh, with the previous experience of what we did with tarawat or the other companies I see the early stage investors making 8x to 10x returns in the next uh, 24 to 36 months kind of a thing. That's a big value because as the company uh, expands into more geographies as we acquire more customers both on the consumer side as well as on the bank side, 
uh, the the you know the uh, valuation would go up uh, in those times and then our vision is in next 3 to 5 years time we would want to see the leal either listed in either in a regional or an international exchange because of the value which we are delivering so if you look at it the closer to what the leal is doing here is something uh, which in us it was done by nerd wallet or or credit karma or in uk by clear score all these companies over a period of 7 to 8 years were you know list valued at more than billion dollars and are listed there and that's where we want to take the leal in the next 5 to 7 years Talabat became Talabat because some international company bought it and turned it into Talabat. I mean, Talabat was already Talabat, and it was a startup, and it was a, had it had its potential. But a, a huge venture capital, I believe, or international institute saw the value in this. They were already doing it, by the way. The company that bought Talabat was already doing something similar in their region. Um, how is that viable, doable? Is that even something that's you're entertaining? Yeah, no, you're right. So, we, uh, inshallah, time would come for that also in our strategy when we look at in a little longer term strategy. So, some of these companies which I name, uh, they are focused more in Europe and US. But obviously, the value which we are doing overlaps with what they do. So, if at all you know these companies look at Middle East uh, region entry, I think the deal will become a simpler vehicle for them because, as you know, here in the region, we understand the regulation, we understand the nuances. we have relationships uh, you know which we have built over a period of last 7 8 years so that is one a way in which we see it scaling up the second is some of the bigger investors you know like uh, early stage investor which are big ticket they do a lot of uh, you know uh, follow on investment so like they have fund dedicated to the mina region so we see that where we also see the overlapping value is uh, you know it's the value of the financial data it's the value of the insights which we are creating so you know you have a lot of uh, Uh, big organizations which are operating out of uh, middle east and region uh, which are looking out at the financial insights and data so there would be at some point in time there would be a synergy um, to evaluate and look at uh, where the path can converge or merge kind of thing but we are not actively working on that path right we know that this is the mission on which we are we are solving a problem in the initial few years the idea is to expand and make it accessible and easier for as many people within the gcc and then expand to mina before we start thinking about what is the exit strategy you know whether we are going a path or we are going b path kind of stuff now naturally when you're talking to investors and you're telling them that look we're in bahrain next month we're in uae uh, before the end of the year we should be somewhere have a foot in saudi uh, in the next 2 years we're thinking of kuwait and oman and uh, iraq and lebanon and egypt and syria so uh that is the outside venture the world of venture capitalists when they look at you they're looking at you not just as a bahrain company they're looking at you as a regional financial Absolutely. marketplace correct which is what makes you even more attractive uh, for them correct so it's in the interest of the angel investors to come and give you what you can Absolutely. what they can Absolutely. what little money they can yes okay to get on board so that you can go to this t- country and go to this country and go to this country because in doing so you're becoming a lot more attractive to the you know times 10 10x uh, you know the companies that are going to be buying you and hopefully buying all these uh, angel investors out as well uh, absolutely and that's the value proposition for the angel investors if you look at amazon see when the companies become big people say oh wow this is a big company amazon if you go to the early days he has raised money from you know people giving 25000 50000 right to survive that and 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 those all is this credit card yeah absolutely, absolutely. Credit and, and doing uh, yeah. the spot we have yeah. done that in you know when i said bootstrap you have absolutely zero idea that is story for some time uh, you know like uh, how do you manage such thing but you know the value coming back to the angel investors is that exactly right we are building the venture we are putting our uh, blood and sweat uh, in this but you know the real value is for these angel investors too and it will help us expedite because you know the game is about reaching faster and reaching better i think in terms of better we are already there after our new launch in terms of the product value proposition we will continue to enhance but i think where this money would help us is reaching fast mm-hmm. um i have some questions over here that i'm sure. re- reading out to you so is uh, one of them is um what is something that most people don't know about you Okay so when you say most people don't uh, that I can tell because you know I think uh, my close team members know it right like I don't come across as a person who probably will be doing a lot of adventure sports 
I remember, you know, so last year, you know, me and my son, we actually, we were in Dubai and uh, I sent my team uh, the video of doing a skydive. Uh, you know, so I jumped from... An, an actual skydive? Sky or, or no, no, air? no. Oh, that, I don't even go to such places <laughs> because that's fake. Why will I waste my time and money on uh, just floating in the air kind of thing? So actually, 13,000 feet, uh, you know, in the, on, in the palm uh, landing that. That was the most liberating. I actually wow. recommended people doing after that because you know what? When you And I was the first one to jump off the plane. My son was telling he was the next in queue. There were 10 people, I think, they jumped. So he said, when you were going down, I thought you're down uh, kind of thing. But you know that, that feeling of free float in the air for a few seconds or a minute before you hear that sound, when you know that you're surviving because that parachute opening, that was the most liberating moment of the thing. So I'm big time into adventure sport I've been trying to push my team saying that guys you know you don't know what it is none of them want to do it they said no 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 we are good we're good we watched your video we're good so I think a lot of people uh, externally don't know that about uh, me that you know I'm you're into adventures adventure yes. sports yes have you I've, as I said I've seen you on several of the startup events right uh, winning yeah, as well. Very impressive. Well done. Thank you. Um, and as you mentioned, you've been to, uh, you've, you've won several of these kind of uh, entrepreneurial awards uh, in different sectors and different areas of, I think. Have you been on the Biban show? No, haven't been on Biban show. Uh, you know, the ask there is uh, to be Arabic speaking, which one of the co-founders done, but she's not here. And usually, you know, some of these events which we participated, We've gone because we were really invited by them. And second is, you know, if the money is good and it is without equity, you know, you need to go and participate, right? Right. right. So like Visa everywhere when it was happening in Saudi, though it was in Saudi, the money was good. It was giving us a good brand of association part of it. So we participated. We won. We haven't been to. Okay. Okay. Maybe something to be considered. I don't think they're doing a season this year. So I think they reached out to me uh, a month back, somebody from their team, and I did ask about, you know, like, oh, is it a show in Arabic? They said, yes, somebody needs to be Arabic speaking on the show, basically. Yeah. Yes, although a lot of dialect is in English as well. Yeah, that's but, true. You know, it, it is a, it is a, it's aired on an Arabic platform. Yes, correct. Which is no, I, I completely yeah, understand. That, that's yeah, the, the, the medium. Is, yeah. But I believe we're changing and revamp. They're changing and they're revamping uh, certain parts of it, which is why they're not doing it this year. They're doing it. They're skipping okay. a year to relaunch next year. But uh, this is something maybe you might want to uh, tap into, and because it definitely gives you the publicity as well. Right, up to and course. Carrying on in the publicity, the way that you're doing the marketing. Yeah. Let's just carry on with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if it's working, it's working. Yeah, absolutely. Until you become what you are, and then you really have to take those billboards and spend those monies, you know. So until then, you know. Carry it on, and and I think Biban is is a is a very good opportunity uh, for you and uh, you and your co-founders. Yes, sure. Um, what are some of the biggest opportunities that you see on the horizon in the financial markets? Right. So I think uh, the biggest thing is if you really see what even as the lead we are trying to do is to get the personalized uh, products a reality in the uh, in not only in the region, right? Uh, because there is no personalization as I was talking about, right? That's a big opportunity. You know, where, you know, uh, people are able to get the product what suits their lifestyle need. That is one. The second is, uh, we see is a more intuitiveness in the product offering. So my dream is, say, for example, you walk into Montreal, right? You're looking for a car and based on your location, your app pops up or the notification pops up and saying that, hey, you're looking for this car. Uh, you are pre-approved from XYZ Bank and you can do that kind of thing rather than you going to the bank that coming to you wow stuff, that would be right? fantastic yeah right absolutely so that's and, and that's where you know the technology is available the AI is there the financial data is there the machine learning is there it's a question of platform like ours I do not believe the banks would bring in that because not because they can't they have a lot of money but I think banks are also bound by you know a lot of time they have a lot of regulatory compliance requirement a lot of their resources go into that and their decision making process is large so I believe that fintech like us can lead the way and then the banks can follow. And we need to collaborate with banks on that part, right? Because these are not our products. So Correct. we have to, on back of it, partner with likes of National Bank of Berlin or Ella or Al Salam or, you know, any of the other banks uh, like that. So I, I see that as a big potential. Uh, you know, what you're seeing the potential of AI right now is imagine bringing in AI to the financial data part of it securely, okay. right? You know, 
you are able to know where to invest when to invest uh, and and as you were wishing for a prompt coming to you and your money moves and right with your just a face id where you don't have to make complex decision uh technology makes it unbiased for you kind of thing so these are the two three things where i see things uh moving on in very near horizon hopefully i'll be seeing it in the delil app i mean inshallah that's it, our it, plan if i'm walking into uh, an area or i'm looking at cars and and, and a, a message notification pops up saying here you're pre-approved by this bank according to your financial correct. status correct i mean that that is phenomenal uh, because it's the biggest challenge by the way getting up i mean everybody's problem in, in in world in the life is getting loans even no matter how wealthy you are you always want loans uh, to in- enhance increase and borrow and uh, going through that process of of applying and uh, providing and you know you stream that away and streamline that thing and becomes a and becomes them telling you you want yep. money we have it yep. you, you know that, that just changes the tables around i think you're going to see a a, a change of society absolutely and that's what we uh, aim to achieve uh, so i mean that's the reason we are on this journey when we say finance easy and uh, accessible this is exactly what we mean easy means like you know like like here you see you go out for dining and when you are making the payment at that time you actually ask are there any offers going on and then you know people have different cards uh, kind of thing what if you know your app actually prompts up based on the location and say hey you know what here you are sitting use x bank card rather than using y bank card because you know i have your information on the lil of which cards you are using right because you have given your consent and if i am able to proactively tell you then you don't have to wait for the restaurant guy to tell you do you have x y z yes to get a discount right i'm able to tell you that do that you will still use the bank so you definitely need the banks but you need players like dalil to make life easier yes. and what is what we are trying to do i agree i agree i'm i'm planning a, a trip next week and i need to take a uh, kareem uber and i'm like i know one of my cards offers something i know one of my cards and i'm having to go through all six of my cards to find out which one of them is the one yeah but had i <laughs> had this information been on delivery it Correct. would only tell me by the way this is the card that actually works with kareem in terms of discounts and stuff like that so um i i i definitely see the value in in what you're doing today and from meeting you and discussing and finding out what delil's potential and, and a future i also see the value in that as well and um it, it is very impressive i have one last question yes sure you're at a party you're given 60 seconds do you go to parties by the way that's what i wanted to tell you i don't go to the parties <laughs> i'm busy building the product that's <laughs> oh, oh. Well, imagine you're at a party, <laughs> okay? Yes, sir. And you're given 60 seconds. What personal story do you tell in that 60 seconds? Honestly speaking, I don't t- share my personal story usually with people. Uh, you know, uh, I think until unless I have a uh, uh, a bond uh, with the person, I'm a very private person to that extent. I did share a lot with you today <laughs> uh, with you. Uh, so it will depend on the context, uh, basically, because I'm not somebody who would like to showcase myself or talk. I, I, I'm not one of those guys who want to be the centerpiece of the party, right? So, and that's the reason probably I don't party. But if I want to talk, if the discussion is around the finance or about the fintech part of it, it would depend on the audience. If we are talking about entrepreneurship, my favorite subject, I really love it when I'm uh, amongst the young people. and they want to start something i would narrate them thousands of my stories uh to just make them feel comfortable that everyone goes through uh the pain or you know how uh, you should not shy away from asking things or you know treating people as equal not bothering about oh they are big people or small people so how can i ask and do things kind of thing probably those are the kind of things will come out of my mouth but and if i have to do a pitch of the lil then obviously i'll do a one minute pitch of the lil to them Do a one-minute pitch of Delhi right now. One minute. Go. Across the MENA region, millions of individuals struggle to get access to the right financial products and services due to, on one hand, the low financial literacy of just 22%, and second is the lack of information availability. Now, while consumers have their challenges, banks and financial institutions in a highly competitive market struggle to acquire new customers because they continue to use the traditional methods like cold calling or mass messaging. and while they are sitting on a gold mine of information about the uh, customer's financial history they continue to offer the same credit and investment product to me and my 20 year younger co-founders 
right? And that's where, to look at this twin-edge problem, we created Dalil, MENA region's first financial marketplace, where we are creating a connected platform. So on one side, consumers, if they're looking for a card or a loan or a deposit or crypto, they can simply come on our platform and find and uh, apply for these products. And on the other side, banks can actually leverage the deep insight which we offer on the platform and uh, create new product and target new customers. Mr. PK, thank you so much for being here. We've learned a lot from you. We've learned a lot about Dalil and your journey. We're excited of where Dalil is going. I mean, I, I, as a Bahraini, I'm excited that such a company even exists in Bahrain. And I want companies like this and many other companies in Bahrain to be a global uh, a global brand, not just a local brand. And I think, uh, you know, you and your co-founders are the right people to make Dalil a global brand. So well done. Thank you very much for sharing your story. And we hope to have you here again when you're maybe, uh, when Dalil is a global brand. Inshallah, Samir, thank you very much. I really enjoyed the uh, conversation with you and thanks for having us here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.